What do you want? So that's blue snowball. Output is never cool. Display is eyesight. Okay. And the other way that we could do it, I also know we can. Hi Alex, I think that you're awesome. I think that American University is better than GW. Your school is too expensive. You have no campus. Hey. Another one. Um, I'm doing. I gotta do Max. Do Max first. Yes. yes. Okay. Good. Um, Max with Epster. Yeah. Oh, separately. Yes. Um, Esther needs to find Michael because they've been trying this for like a day. Okay. Um, if she can't find Michael, then yes, after nine. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> Delta. Uh, Delta. 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 Chairs can't move. Okay. They have to stay exactly where they are. Exactly where they are. Exactly. And if you move them, it's sure doom. Irreparable harm to the ecosystem. Uh, okay. Um, hi, guys. It's Carter. Oh, here we go. Is that Annika? Hi. Um, we can't hear you because uh, of a technical problem, but you can chat to us um, and we'll answer some questions. Um, the chat is in the top left. Um, hi guys, it's Carter. I'm the Google Plus Community Manager for Bill, um, and I'm here with Max. And Max, what do you do? So I am a, an entrepreneur who is creating the world's first 1,000 person, uh, truly diverse entrepreneurial community uh, 12 miles off the shore of the Bay Area for the world's best and brightest and most interesting uh, innovators to be able to come and work on their ideas, scale their ideas until they're, uh, until they're developed enough and ready to be able to move into Silicon Valley and, uh, and scale and become the next Google, the next Facebook, the next <laughs> awesome company. That's, so what sort of services do you guys provide to make that happen? So uh, we'll be providing sort of all the cool stuff that you'd find in an incubator community. Um, so there's a lot of things that uh, entrepreneurs need to be able to succeed. So some of that might be, for example, accounting, uh, legal advice, um, but also connections with investors, um, the capital that they need to succeed. And, and, but really, the, the most interesting component, the most important part of what we're doing is connecting entrepreneurs with other entrepreneurs. Gotcha. So you create an environment with a thousand other people who are all working on something really cool, really interesting, and you make sure that everybody on board is actually somebody who's also doing something interesting. And, uh, and the ideas and the, and the, and the flourishing that will come out of that, I think, will be very productive and have a lot of value to a lot of people. Sounds a little bit like Bill. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes. This is a, a small-scale uh, uh, 
we're, we're copying this on a much larger level. Yeah, awesome. Um, so do you you just gave a talk or you're about to? I just gave a talk. Just gave a talk? Uh, yes. What was your uh, talk called? Uh, it was called Blue Seed, the Brain Magnet. Okay. So the idea behind that was um, we want to attract the best and brightest from all over the world and bring them on board. Uh, because right now a lot of people want to come to Silicon Valley. They want to create technologies here in the country because Silicon Valley is sort of the most fertile place in the world to do so. Right. Especially if you have a tech startup. Right? Of course. Um, and everybody knows that, right? Right. So, so uh, uh, there's other places around the world, you know, it's not like it's impossible to create a, a tech company in, in, in Belgium, say, but, but it's much more difficult. Um, so we, uh, we want to take that idea of Silicon Valley being the best place to, to do this and expand it to the rest of the world. Okay. Because if you're right now from Belgium or from Russia or wherever, uh, and you want to come to Silicon Valley to create a company, but you don't have, you're either not personally fantastically wealthy and you can't afford the, afford the investor visa, right. um, uh, there are not very many options for you to be able to come to Silicon Valley and work on the company. There just isn't an avenue, there's not a channel. The U.S. government has not designed the law such that entrepreneurs can come here and do that. So the law was designed uh, decades ago for an era in which large companies would bring people from around the world to work on specific problems uh, and they had to prove that they couldn't find this person somewhere in the U.S. But that's not the world we live in today. We live in a world where great ideas come from anywhere. And, um, and, uh, and that's what we're, we're expanding and, and trying to, uh, to push the boundaries. Awesome. Let's see. Annika's brought a robot friend, which is freaking awesome. Uh, let's see. She says, we're all entrepreneurs, uh, like an island, biodome. Do you need a life-size Android? She's working on one now, and he's recording. Um, so I guess that kind of brings a, me to a question: like, what sort of ideas are you seeing? Are you seeing Android weird robot ideas? Are you seeing? I so we've seen um, we've seen a lot of uh, we've seen some nanotech companies. We've seen some biotechs. I have we've seen I think one other robotics company has expressed interest. They told us, look, we'd like to be on board. We'd like to see what we're able to do on board and collaborate with. Um, but uh, so mostly it's been uh, mostly it's been software companies, uh, web companies. Um, so I'd say maybe 30% are not of that category okay. and are instead something like AI or um, which I guess could be called a software company, but AI or biotech or nanotech, that sort of thing. We maybe see about 30% that are coming from those other fields. But I'd love to see a lot more because I think um, I think even the software companies would benefit a lot from bringing in ideas from those diverse fields. Cool. So let's say that someone like Annika wants to get involved with you. How do they start that? Uh, so it all depends on, on where, where somebody like Annika would be. Um, so if, you, uh, if you're already funded, if you already have some, some money coming in. She's in LA. Well, hey, that's, that's <laughs> awesome. So about 20% about of the people who um, suggested that they'd be interested are from the U.S. So. Um, I have a ton of friends at Bill. Yeah. Um, you have a friend in us. Things that happen when you are underwater on a boat and want Wi-Fi. We yes. sometimes dip out of our own hangouts. Um, Somehow there was one spot somewhere that I saw that actually worked. I pulled really? out my phone, and there was somewhere in that room where I got like three bars. Building intelligent lobsters. Yes. Why not? Yeah. We, so we got 
We should put that on the website. It's, it's, I think, that's I think good we should. I like, hey, you guys. I would love to see more intelligent lobsters. I would like to see more intelligent lobsters as well. Yeah. Um, I um, always feel bad for them yeah. when we eat them. Because I actually cooked a couple of lobsters n maybe a few years ago for the first time. I felt really, I felt pretty bad about it. I don't think yeah. I'm gonna do it again. I I did, I did it once and I felt awful. They squeal. I they make a sound. They squeal. It was it was it was heart wrenching. Hello. <laughs> um, so we're done here, but not before you give us your final thought to leave people with. My final thought is. I would love for everybody to be thinking, how best, what can I do that leverages future to come about more quickly than it otherwise would? So in 100 years, what could I have been doing now such that 100 years from now we're as advanced and as in an awesome a place as we possibly could be? Bad ass. All right, well, let's say goodbye here. We hug. So cool. goodbye, Matt. Thank you. Thank you for having me. More of you. Yeah. Um, and we'll be hanging out again shortly. Bye, Annika. Thanks for joining us.